or attempt to, in search of a heavyweight title shot. Klitschko will be fighting against South African Corey Sanders. Vladimir coming off of a 10-round destruction of the very cautious Jamil McCline in his last fight. Tonight takes on Sanders, who has fought only three rounds in the last three years. This could be brief. It could be explosive. Once again, back at ringside with George Foreman. George, looking back again at Jones Ruiz, now that Roy Jones has seen how his skills match up with a heavyweight, could he conceive of fighting the Giants of the division, Lennox Lewis and the Klitschko brothers, or should he content himself with the guys closer to his size, like Chris Bird and Evander Holyfield? Oh, no, if you're David, you've already slain Goliath. What difference does it make if he was six inches taller? Stay with the Giants. Keep the glory going. <laughs> a brave idea, certainly, and, and not one, Larry Merchant, that we're certain Jones will approach because when you interviewed him in the ring afterward, he seemed to be dissing both Holyfield and Bird, who strike many people as the obvious choices. Why would he do that? Roy Jones makes his own movies about himself, goes his own way. And if it's true, as I've heard, that there are no promotional handcuffs on him, he could fight anyone, which means that after Lennox Lewis and Mike Tynus Tyson finish their business later this year, and after Jones presumably defends his light heavyweight championship one more time, he could be tempted into fighting a big man, Lewis, or a big name, Tyson, whatever. The heavyweight conversation has sure gotten more interesting. You're talking back down to 175 pounds and then back up yep. to fight 250-pound fighters? Quite a trip. Well, let's get ready now for the heir apparent, the man regarded by so many experts as the next big thing in the heavyweight division, Vladimir Klitschko. George Foreman, he's the one who's under the microscope here. What have you seen? He's so far so good. Now he's got to get out there, not only win, but he's got to make the people like him. After what Jones did recently, and of course Tyson and Lewis, you got to go out there and make them love you now. The whole world, not just here. Well, and there are skeptics about Klitschko, and uh, they point out that the last big guy who was put into this position of the heir apparent, whom we helped to put there, quite frankly, Larry Merchant, Michael Grant, was destroyed when he finally got his chance. Why should Klitschko be any different? The evidence. Klitschko, at the age of 20, won an Olympic gold medal. Grant, at 20, first put on boxing gloves. Klitschko's talent seems to match his star potential. The star potential of Grant always depended on whether his ability as a fighter would match it. And finally, the big trainers, the top guys in the U.S., all of whom were never fully convinced about Grant, think that Klitschko is the next best thing. Of course, the next best thing, Jim, sometimes becomes the last big bust, but he's got my vote. All right, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly he's big enough to occupy the space. Let's take a look at the tale of the tape for Vladimir Klitschko against Corey Sanders. Introducing a new wrinkle here, reach now being measured by us from the armpit to the fingertips and you can see that vladimir has a two inch advantage there to go with his 11 year age advantage one and a half inch height edge and then the regular reach measurement which we now call wingspan fingertip to fingertip across the shoulders a three inch advantage for vladimir he looked chiseled and tight at 242 corey sanders is a 224 pound fighter with a one golf handicap rules of the bout from our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The rules for the Klitschko Sanders fight. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. And then accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Meine Damen und Herren, der Herausforderer aus Südafrika, Mr. Curry Sanders.
Equity Golf Tour and then on the Senior Golf Tour. <laughs> One other thing which has limited Sanders' number of big appearances in the heavyweight division is his punching power. And he has considerable power among the biggest hitters in the division. Und hier kommt den Mann, auf den deutschen Boxfans. Slightly different procedure here than in the United States. The ring announcer cueing the ring entrances for the fighters. So Karsten Speck will now give a big intro to Vladimir Klitschko before Klitschko walks in. In Hamburg, Dr. Vitali Klitschko! Mistake, he called him by his brother's name. Somebody should tell Carson, and he's being informed right now, that it is Vladimir Klitschko and not Vitaly who's on his way to the ring. Uh, the ring announcer is an actor, and he loved his line. Well, it, frankly, there's no shortage of people in the boxing public who have yet to adequately sort out for themselves the difference between Vladimir and Vitaly. And that confusion will probably obtain until one of them scores a big enough win to move front and center in the division. Well, Vladimir... That reminds me of that commercial at home when that guy <laughs> calls out the wrong name. Yep. <laughs> Say, well, how would you like to get out of here? <laughs> That's how that fella feels now. The, the, the announcer. Well, Vladimir charmed us yesterday when he turned up at our fighter meeting wearing blue suede shoes, uh, did a card trick worthy of uh, of any great card trickster, and and finally told us that after this fight, he's moving near his brother in Beverly Hills, California. And since the card trick essentially amounted to three-card Monty, we suggested perhaps he should live in Manhattan, <laughs> where he can have a second career. Yeah, and learn more tricks from the great Ricky Jay. So now with both fighters in the ring, further ceremony from the ring announcer, Karsten Speck. And he has straightened out his Klitschko's and has the right fighter in the ring now. Younger brother, Vladimir. Older brother, Vitaly, is ranked as the number one contender at the moment by both the WBA and the WBC, but Corey Sanders doesn't have to worry about him tonight. He's worrying about Vladimir, who is not highly ranked by the other governing bodies, partially because he holds a marginalized title belt. And as Karsten Speck continues his introductions in German, he'll be introducing two judges who've made a long trip to the, uh, from the United States, Clark Sammartino and John Stewart, along with Axel Zilke, the German judge. Most of us expect that Sammartino, Stewart, and Zilke should have little need to sharpen their pencils tonight. Particularly since, as you can probably see, this is a relatively small ring under the normal dimensions of 20 feet by 20 feet. It's an 18-foot ring, and uh, maybe not that. In the boxing vernacular, it's a phone booth. Und nun zum amtierenden Weltmeister Vladimir Klitschko. Sein Alter 26 Jahre. Seine Größe, 2 Meter. Er brachte beim Wiegen ein Gewicht von George, what will the very small ring mean to this fight? Oh, a lot of clinching. If you're not careful because you got two opponents with long arms and they'll find themselves holding on a lot more than punching if you're not careful. Not enough room to punch. The record for Corey Sanders, a loss early in his career to Nate Tubbs, brother of former title belt holder Tony Tubbs, and then the knockout loss to Rockman in the year 2000. Since that time, he's fought three rounds in three years. A one-round knockout of Michael Spratt and a two-round knockout of Otis Tisdale in Oklahoma City. Vladimir Klitschko suffered one loss in his career. 
in his first fight in his hometown of Kiev in the Ukraine. He ran out of gas in the 11th round against Ross Purity, an American veteran. And Purity was hired by Corey Sanders as a sparring partner to help him prepare for this fight. Other than that, 40 wins, 37 knockouts for Vladimir. Yeah, since that fight, Klitschko has modified his style to be more suitable to a big guy. And he's had 16 knockouts, one fight weight the distance, and that's when he beat up Chris Bird, knocking him down twice. Klitschko's most recent appearance was December 7 in Las Vegas, Nevada. And here's a look at referee Gennaro Rodriguez, who will be the man charged with the responsibility of trying to avoid all those glitches George Foreman talked about in the small ring, or this small ring. But speaking of Vladimir's fight against Jamil McCline on December 7, some American ringside reporters, media types, were scathingly critical of Klitschko for being so cautious in allowing McCline to simply stay away from him for 10 rounds before finally finishing the deal. As one magazine writer, Bill Detloff, pointed out, however, nobody else in the division was actually racing to fight the 6 foot 6 inch McCline. Right, and all, all Klitschko did was uh, pitch a shutout and hit a home run in the 10th inning. National anthems. Corey Sanders has a love affair with his nation of South Africa, and you can almost feel his heart beating. They tell us that when Vladimir Klitschko fights an astonishing number of women watch on television, and you can see why. And incidentally, if they had played the national anthems of every country in which Vladimir has lived, we'd have been here all night. Because <laughs> he has lived in Kurdistan, Kazakhstan, Russia, Lithuania, the Czech Republic, Ukraine, and Germany. And as Larry just told you, he'll soon be moving to the USA. And he has fought in 15 different cities in Germany. You're saying some of that astonishing number of women may have met him personally? <laughs> well, they sure have seen him. You should put a smile on his face. It reminds me of Wilder. Remember the young Frankenstein <laughs> trying to make him dance, but everybody was afraid of naughty. <laughs> Putting on the wrist. <laughs> or as Peter Boyle put it, Putting on a wrist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I give you instruction. I want to obey my command at all times. Punches here are good. Punches here are good. Good luck to you. Take love. Vladimir Klitschko seems so perfect, you wonder what's wrong with him. Can Corey Sanders find out?
many in boxing will not share that enthusiasm, Larry, until he produces more quick knockouts and appears to attack more aggressively. But Vladimir says, in the heavyweight division, you cannot take a risk. And against Sanders, he's fighting a big punch. And as you can see, the, the small ring doesn't really help Klitschko, but he likes to jump back after a punch and before a punch. He's aggressive, but he loves jumping backwards. Good jab by Sanders got in. And, and Sanders loves movement. Attention. Sanders loves his movement, too, so... You would like to see one get a little more aggressive to make this small ring work. Vladimir Klitschko, usually an aggressive jabber, as Corey Sanders lines up in his southpaw profile, it may be more difficult for Vladimir to get the jab in. Hard left hand by Corey Sanders moved Klitschko back to the center of the ring off the ropes. If Klitschko does have a bad habit, Larry, it is that sometimes he backs straight up with his head up against an attacking fighter. That's the kind of thing that could cause big problems against Sanders. Well, if you're tall like that, it doesn't matter because you can almost see over the top. It's the shorter guys backing up who get into a lot of trouble. You got the reach, and height, and do whatever you like. Sanders is holding his gloves high, which is how Ross Purity fought Klitschko. Kept his hands up. Made Klitschko punch a lot. Sanders acknowledges that he has a natural tendency to trade punches, and he has a natural tendency to square his body up and fight. He says he'll have to fight both those tendencies here tonight because he wants to try to present a more elusive target to Vladimir. Left hook lands for Klitschko, right hand of the body. Left hand by Sanders, snaps Klitschko's head back. A lot of that soft paws can get you just when ordinarily you can't be gotten because they are just on the wrong side. That may be one of the few times we've seen Klitschko hit with a good solid punch by a good puncher. He hits hit again and holds. The problem Klitschko is having, he's got his knees bent, lowering his height some more. about to become the last big bust if he go down again, although the clock is running out on this round. So Vladimir Klitschko is down twice in the opening round against Corey Sanders, and all of Germany holds its breath. And he wobbles back to the corner. Give you the bucket, give you the bucket. This is this okay? Are you okay? As they speak German in Klitschko's okay? corner, our interpreter here. is Johannes Willerbeck. Yeah. Come on, go in there, boy. Be careful. Remember your training, boy. Remember all you practice today. Keep this here. Hold this right here. This is okay. It's no problem. Open your mouth. Uh, here are questions being asked. A perfect left hand. Asked of Klitschko, he's never been asked before. How does he deal with adversity? That's what we all wanted to see. And he has got a lot of adversity to deal with right here. Well, we know what Hasim Rachman was able to do in this situation. He was able to come back and knock Sanders out. Now Klitschko's down a third time, and there are two minutes, 53 seconds to go in this round. And he's not seeing that left hand come. He just cannot see the left hand that Sanders is hitting him with. And he's attacking to try to get out of trouble instead of holding. And this is not going to go well. Another knockdown, the fourth time, and the referee, Gennaro Rodriguez, stops the fight, and thus ends the Vitaly Klitschko, or the Vladimir Klitschko Express. You can look at Klitschko's body, there's still not much sweat on him at all. Leaving out of the dressing room, waiting for the shoulder in. Body is dry as a bone. It can happen to anybody at any time. 
you got to loosen up before you get into the ring. We've seen it too many times before. Well, the one thing that was unknown about Vladimir coming into this fight was what would happen if he got tagged by a legitimate puncher. Now we know. Well, what happened to him is what happens to most heavyweights when they get hit by a big heavyweight's best shot. But nevertheless, this is a shock to the boxing world. And once again, the I think it's a shock to your world, Larry. No, I, I think don't it think is. the boxing world is that surprised. I mean, it doesn't surprise well, it, you it, sometimes when the guys fight. It shocks me, a certainly. Lot of the different places he fought, and uh, it's not a surprise. It's a, of course, you would think that Corey Sanders would be the least guy to do this to him, but fought a lot of hometown fights in different places. Well, let's just point out that, that it isn't just HBO, which had been enthusiastic about Vladimir Klitschko. He's been number one in the Ring Magazine rankings, unaffected by politics for more than a year. So it, there are many who had anointed You'd be him as the how, many, how, how affected everybody else with politics. You'd be surprised. Well, I would. I'm not sure what you're referring to, George. No, I mean, you just can't. People saw him as a great, great, and he prospect. still is a great prospect. Well, he got no, caught I think, cold. I think now, now there's the the question that was asked of him. He did not answer. He can come the, back. The way a fighter is supposed to, George. You're the he one who pointed back. out that what a, a, a great heavyweight needs is not only the ability to punch but to take a punch yeah. and he did not take that i like well. the fight he was on his way up when the ref called the fire out i like that you keep getting up that's a man he's got a future in this sport and he's not done meanwhile let's focus on the winner that's the 39th win against two losses for corey sanders and at age 37 he becomes an overnight sensation he wasn't even afraid when he got into the ring Corey Sanders just walked right in looking and winking his eye at me maybe he felt that as big a puncher as himself shouldn't have to be afraid of anybody yeah I would expect him to be a little bit more nervous well he had nothing to lose I mean no, <laughs> nobody expected Corey Sanders to be here for any reason other well, than well, as an opponent for Vladimir Klitschko right. the three rounds in three years he came in here he said he had gone to a uh, psychologist for confidence he shaved off his mustache for a new look. He got in top shape, and he threw that big left hand. Yeah, that's, that's that straight left hand. That started everything. And Klitschko just couldn't see it coming. It all started badly when the ring announcer introduced him by his older brother's name. And now, his older brother is the one who will move into the spotlight. I would still like to have a piece of Klitschko. I think there's a lot of money and a lot of championship belts still awaiting him. You just can't come out of your corner and out of the dressing room dry like that, not even warmed up. He didn't even bounce up in the corner. He just sit there staring. Got to get loose. The last country. heavyweight you pointed out was dry when he came to the ring was Michael Grant against Jameel McCline, and he was gone in about 40 seconds. Yeah, for the bigger guys, a lot of us, we really need to warm up because you catch us on the cheek. And the legs just won't hold us up. Corey Sanders standing at the side of the ring and looking down at George Foreman as if to say, well, George, you understand. You and I are in the same fraternity. <laughs> Heavy hands. Well, and once again, we have another year of, of the upset. It right? continues. It continues. We saw Vernon Forrest get upset. We saw Timmy Austin get upset. Um, we saw Roy Jones beat up a big guy, even though it wasn't an upset. Something that surprised a lot of people. I tell you, Roy Jones and guys that size can beat up a lot of big guys. Get yourself your 195 pounder and you quick handed. You can go a long ways in this division because the big guys are sitting ducks. There are not words to express the level of shock in this arena. The Klitschko's had risen to the level of folk heroes in the United States. There's a tight shot of older brother Vitaly, who suddenly moves ahead of his younger brother in the pecking order of ringside experts. A boxing expert friend who advised me a lot, his name is Hans Matson. He told me that Klitschko was just maybe a fluke and that uh, one test and he'll be out of it. So, and I told him not so. so. I don't know who's going to win this argument. Well, as you say, he's he'll be 27 March 25. There's plenty of time to retool. But the skeptic would say you can't learn to take a punch. Yeah, but he, he got up. 
He got up every time. You've got to give him that credit. Final CompuBox numbers. Corey Sanders, by far the more aggressive fighter early. 17 out of 61. Vladimir never really got going. Power shots told the story of the fight, obviously. No point in looking at the jab numbers. Corey Sanders landing 38% of his power shots. Vladimir wasn't defending himself all that well. And it's a knockout victory. A devastating knockout victory as the referee stops the fight after the fourth knockdown of Vladimir Klitschko in fewer than two rounds. And now let's go to Larry Merchant standing by with the man of the moment, Corey Sanders. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, congratulations, Corey. Does this mean you're going to have to uh, postpone your golf career? <laughs> that it looks like a yes. Uh, well, like I said, uh, I always think that I had, you know, uh, opportunity to beat him. And, and I'm one of the good heavyweights in the world. And uh, I'm sure tonight uh, prove it, you know. Did you know something about him, see something about him that made you feel that A, he was open for that left hand, and that B, he hadn't really been tested by a big punch? You know, I, I honestly think he hasn't been tested by a good punch, to be honest. Uh, you know, last night, Lennox Lewis phoned me, and he said to me, Cody, put pressure on a guy. Don't let him dictate the guy. He, he, he can't take it. He's scared. you got to put pressure on him. And that's when I, you know, when I got in tonight, I thought, that's not going to hit me with a couple of shots, which didn't hurt me, and I thought, you know, go forward and attack him. Do you, are you uh, friends with Lennox Lewis that he would call you up to give you a pep talk? Yeah, we, we know it. So, you know, uh, it's very great of Lennox to do it. Uh, we belong to the same promoters and, and, and so. And, uh, you know, like I said, he just phoned me last night. And uh, I was surprised, too, and it's a great honor for me. You've talked about going to a sports psychologist to give you some uh, positive thoughts. You cut off your mustache to change your look. You got in top shape. Lennox Lewis called you. Were all these things coming together for you tonight? I believe so. You know, like I said, it's the first time that I've been to a sports psychologist. And it's fantastic. Everything worked like I wanted to work it and uh, tonight prove it. All right, let's take a look at some of the knockdowns and you tell us what you saw and whether you felt how vulnerable he was. Well, you know, when I caught him there, you know, I could have seen his eyes. He's got like a skate, you know, and I knew uh, that, uh, you know, he can't take shots. And that's when I thought, you know, uh, you got to go and, and just, you know, catch him with a great lift. And uh, which definitely happened, and uh, he was gone. I knew, you know, it's just a matter of time and going to catch him again. And so that even when you got to round two, you knew it was over? For sure, you know, when he walked to the corner, he was gone. Uh, I mean, I know myself also, you know, when a guy catches you once, it's hard to get back. And uh, which surprised me basically tonight was, you know, he didn't use his jab like I know he used it. And uh, I took advantage of it. I know this is unexpected also at this time. Do you have any plans now? to either fight Vitaly Klitschko, who challenged you twice in the ring. What was that? No, I don't know. Uh, in my opinion, it's, I think he's a bad sportsman, to be honest. You know, uh, you win some, you lose some. And he came to me, and I'll take back, and I'll get you back, and all that, because I beat his brother. So, uh, you know, well, bad luck for him. He had the title, and I'm not looking at him. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations, Corey Sanders. Thank you very much. Jim? And Vladimir Klitschko, following his crushing defeat, waited in the ring graciously. He, too, now stands by with Larry. Thank you, Jim. Vladimir, did you not take this opponent seriously enough? Uh, I take seriously enough, and, uh, of course, I've uh, product mistakes in the fight. And, of course, I have to anal analyze that in the future. And uh, for me, it means uh, welcome to the boxing business because all big champions was losing the fights. And uh, so it's happening. And of course, I will give my best and I will uh, have a rematch with Corey Sanders. And uh, then I will show what I can do. Are you s telling us that you have a rematch clause in your contract? Uh, believe me, I will get the rematch. I have the right on that. All right. Were you having difficulty seeing his left hand, or did that first punch come as such a shock that you never fully recovered? Of course, he's a tough fighter, and uh, he has a really uh, quick hands, and uh, for me, it's the starting point that I will 
more focused on the fight and uh, of course I will do it in the future. Let's take a look at the fight as it unfolded and you tell us what you see, Vladimir. This is the first knockdown. So, of course, uh, the mistake was that uh, I would like to shoot him uh, with my right hand and he, he was faster than I am. He got under your left, y your right hand, and he threw his left hand. Exactly. exactly. And by that time, do you recall, were you conscious at all? Do you know what was going on? Uh, of course, it's difficult to focus on the fight uh, if you uh, get the punch. And uh, so what I can do, it, I just can show in the future uh, that I'm uh, better. Between rounds, what were you thinking? Uh, between rounds, of course, I have to focus on his uh, fast hands, and uh, actually, that's it. Your brother Vitali was so upset after the fight that he challenged Corey Sanders. So who's going to get him get to fight him first, you or your brother? No, it was nothing, uh, nothing bad between Corey Sanders and Vitali. He Vitali just said that uh, he will return back the belt to the family, and uh, that's it. Of course, Whittle is uh, right now contender number one in WBC, and uh, I hope he will fight against Lennox Lewis. And with Corey Sanders, I will uh, take a rematch. I know you're being philosophical, but how disappointed are you? I'm really disappointed on my person right now, but uh, I know that I just have to learn. Long life, and you have always learn. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Jim? Long life, he says. Plenty of time to learn. Well, he just learned a great deal, I think, in less than three and a half minutes did Vladimir Klitschko. George, let's talk about Vladimir first. You say he can come back from this. What are the steps he should take? First of all, he's got to take some time off. He's been traveling all over the globe like a globetrotter. Take some time out. Understand, nothing's wrong with him. He just got caught with one good one. Joe Lewis, George Foreman, you name him. We've all had it happen to us. He can come back and even bigger. What about Sanders? He just projected himself into the big picture thinking in the heavyweight division. What should he do? Oh, uh, Sanders is Kevin carrying a hammer around in his glove, no doubt about it. And that big hammer is going to be around. He's not he's here to stay, no doubt about it. So you think he should come to America and seek bigger fights? I think wherever he just uh, came from, he should go back and get some more of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Larry Merchant returning from the interviews. And what are your final thoughts on the sudden demise of Vladimir Klitschko. Well, one is how the, the heavyweight chessboard changes so much. Last week, we saw Roy Jones jump right into the middle of it. This week, we saw Vladimir Klitschko get knocked off of that chessboard. Questions that I, we have in our minds, if you recall before the fight, I said, he seems so perfect. What's wrong with him? And was Corey Sanders the one to ask the questions that nobody else had asked before. Turned out, we got, the, we got the answer. And I don't know that you recover as quickly as uh, George seems to think you can. Uh, but I, one thing we know is that there is some kind of a rematch if he wants it. And the other thing is, if he's gonna move to Beverly Hills, I'm not sure that's the place to Get your career back together. <laughs> I wonder if that plan might change now. A quick personal mea culpa, incidentally. Nobody's enthusiasm for Vladimir Klitschko was greater than my own. I've been telling you, the audience, and anybody who would listen for a year now, that I thought he was ready to fight Lennox Lewis. I was wrong. Surely not for the first time, and certainly not for the last. Meanwhile, 